This is Bro Builds, and today we're gonna build this camp kitchen, which folds up and makes it super easy to pack in and out of your campsite. And we're gonna use all of this wood right here because wood costs a lot of money, and we're just gonna use what we've got. It's basically three quarter inch and one quarter inch plywood. After grabbing the biggest sheets we could find, we picked through our pile of offcuts for pieces that might work. <laughs> Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Safety third here at Bro Builds. <laughs> Where did it go? It went right over your head. <laughs> it actually flew really well. I knew exactly what I wanted this camp kitchen to look like. So I sketched out some plans with the correct dimensions to use as a cut list, and then we got to work. I love clipboards. To start, we cut our quarter inch plywood into a bunch of pieces that we'll be using for the door fronts, shelves, and the back of the camp kitchen. Staying safe since 1984. Except for that time you dropped off the second story with Then we moved on to the three quarter inch plywood. This will form the top, sides, and bottom of the box, as well as the doors, which will swing open in front, and the lightweight base, which the box will sit on. We cut out the biggest pieces with my circular saw and just did our best to keep these edges as straight as possible. It smells weird. Seriously, I don't know what was living in that wood rack, but whatever it was, Smells like it's dead now. All right, 16 is what we need. 16 is what we're gonna get. He's a jolly good fellow. The base for our camp kitchen will be made of five pieces of plywood. To save weight, we're gonna cut out the middle section from each piece, and then cut out a smaller section from each of the four side pieces, essentially forming legs from a single piece of plywood. So we carefully mark those sections in order to prevent any mistakes of any kind ever from happening. No, we're fine. We didn't do anything wrong. Why? What happened? What? What? What'd you do? Cut right through the support. Oh, geez. We could probably glue it and pocket screw it, and it would probably be fine. Let's let's do, let's see how we can deal with the mess up without having to. Sounds good. Waste wood. Yep. We want to give a big shout out to Husk for sponsoring today's video. Yeah, they sent us this awesome premium control knife, and we're gonna show you how it works right here. Husk knives are super sharp. They're made from high quality Japanese stainless steel. They have a 38 degree blade edge that ensures extreme sharpness, and they'll stay that way for years. The curved blade and this finger grip hole enables better precision in handling, which makes chopping super easy. And the rustic handle looks great outdoors and indoors. I don't know about you, but I am okay with some big, chunky onions in my camp stew. Celery! <laughs> These Japanese knives are light, durable, and sturdy. They're 28 centimeters long, and they weigh only 252 grams. The meat, baby! Which increases comfort and control and reduces the potential for accidents, which is a great thing for us here on Bro Builds. Husk is offering an incredible deal for you guys right now. Go down, click the link in our description below, and you can get 50% off their authentic Japanese knives. The best part is they come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can try them out risk-free. And again, a big thanks to Husk for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the build. Well, this one's perfect. Admittedly, I had the easier job. The cuts were 99% done. I just had to clean up each of the corners. I went too far and started cutting through the support here. What we decided to do, since wood is so expensive and we don't want to waste a piece this big, I think if we shim it, glue it, fill it, whatever, and really it's just a side-to-side -side support, there's no weight on it, I think it's gonna be totally fine. 
This little red square was an awesome tool for the job, and with two of us working, it went super fast. pieces cut out. We've got, you know, the side, the back, um, the top. We're just gonna sand it all, um, just real quickly, make sure nothing's too rough, and then we'll assemble. To avoid trying to sand in all the little nooks and crannies of our finished camp kitchen, we assembly line sanded every single piece up front. I worked the orbital sander and hit all the sides, and Dan hand sanded the edges and corners. Just thumb knuckle. Thumbs up knuckles. <laughs> now we're almost ready for assembly. We just need to cut the grooves for the shelves to slide into. Luckily, each groove takes just a couple of passes on the table saw. So we need to make the gap just a hair over a quarter of an inch. So right now I'm just gonna move the fence a hair to the right, a little over a sixteenth. Nice. Now that all of our pieces are cut out, we're gonna start assembling. Basically, we're just gonna screw them and glue them. We are gonna use a pocket hole jig, and if you guys have never used a pocket hole jig, you can get them for pretty cheap, and man, they make assembling stuff like this so easy. Let's get started. All of our pocket holes are going into the side panels of the kitchen box. We put three at the top of each panel and three at the bottom, which should be enough to hold everything together. Hockey dockey. Nice. It's time to start assembling. <laughs> of course, we also use glue along the edges because that's just smart. And we always do stuff smart. That is one strong joint. <laughs> Dude, we should make a piano. Nope. Like, redneck piano. Well, I, I would do a redneck <laughs> piano. <laughs> So how solid are these pocket screws? Super solid. Oh. Not good. Not good. Let's do this side now. Hashtag bro not pro. Why do all of our wood projects involve the sound of splintering plywood? It turned out fine, but man, I hate that sound. For the back of the box, we just glued and nailed one quarter inch plywood all the way around. The edges didn't line up perfectly, but a hand planer took care of that no problem. I think that's good enough. Yeah. All right, we got to do the doors now, and they're going to swing open from, These from the must front. Be the sides. Those are the sides. All right, back to the table saw just for a second. We are cutting a few little grooves in these door pieces so we can have some shelves in there. And like before, these grooves are just wide enough for some one quarter inch plywood to slide into. Little shelf in the door. All right, let's put these together. After that, the doors went together pretty quickly. We used three quarter plywood for the sides and bottom and one quarter for the top and the shelves. This will be plenty strong enough to store cooking sprays, utensils, canned goods, or anything else you want to keep in here. And just like the back of the box, we glued and nailed one quarter inch plywood to the front of the doors to finish them up. With the doors done, we attached our fold out countertops to each side of the box. These are pretty big pieces of three quarter inch plywood and we just connected them to the top of the camp kitchen with piano hinges and a ton of screws. But they'll also be supported by the doors, so they're not just relying on those hinges. Yeah, it's a really great design. And we'll show you guys exactly how that works in just a second. But first, Ryan's going to put this drawer together. I grooved the two side edges of the drawer front on the table saw and then glued and nailed it to the drawer bottom. 
Helps if you turn the air on first. Mm -hmm. The sides and the bottom of the drawer are quarter inch plywood, while the fronts and backs are three quarter inch. It's not like dovetail joinery or anything fancy, but for a camp kitchen, it works great. And those grooves that I'm fitting the side pieces into, it just makes the whole thing look a little bit cleaner when you view it from the front. The back is less important, so yeah, it can just be whatever. Now let's put a finger hole in the front. You take, so we'll go, we'll start at two here, and then we'll go to, doesn't really matter, 10. So that's eight inches. So halfway between that is four. One, two, three, four. That's you our just take mark. any angle? It doesn't matter, the angle doesn't matter. Yeah. You're just going halfway between the, yeah. yeah. So you can adjust the ruler to get numbers that you're happier with to do math about. Right, because getting <laughs> half of, seven and five sixteenths or whatever it was. That's just... true. Sounds good. We'll see if that works out. It does. So our distance is seven and five eighths. Half of that is three and a half plus five sixteenths. Dead freaking on. Look at that. The method works. Pretty good. Trust the method, everyone. Now that I made it through, I'm gonna drill it from this side because uh, I got the little center hole. So I'm gonna drill it this way so we don't bust out the back side of this plywood. Nice. I see you. Let me take another pass just because it's a little chunky in there still. Well, that was a terrible idea. <laughs> Sander it is. Nice, that drawer fits great. And so do the doors. That looks pretty. So we're gonna install the handles before we assemble the uh, base, which will go over the top and we just want them centered so as you're carrying it, it's not wanting to, you know, be off balance. So our overall width is about 17, 17 and a quarter. Um, eight and an eighth? Eight and a, no, eight, eight and five and a half. Yeah, eight and five, eight, yes, exactly. Got it. Boom, shaga, laga, laga. How's it work? It's great. Yeah, it's good. It's nice and centered. Feels, mm -hmm. yeah, nice and balanced. Look at that. Nice and balanced. I suppose it, yeah. Base, we gotta get the base on. All of the base pieces are already cut. So as long as I don't break one, we're fine. But in order for the base to slide over the handles, we need to remove a little bit of plywood from the crossbar on each of the end pieces. And the table saw did a great job. That looks pretty dang good. Way cleaner than the router would have been. Mm -hmm. We'll just sand it down and we're good to go. It's just like the first one, which was the goal. With those handle spots routed out, we got to work gluing and nailing the base together. The top pieces form a lip where the camp kitchen will sit, while the four side pieces attach to form four very solid legs at each corner. And to save space, the entire thing fits right over the top of the box. Oh, darn it. Is it good? No, we didn't leave enough space. For the hinges. Is that the only thing that's wrong? I think so. So after measuring and marking both spots where the hinges hit the base, Ryan clamped a straight edge and used his handheld router to cut out two more grooves.
have to do is sand those grooves I made just to clean them up a little bit, and then we're just gonna clear coat it, and we'll be done. With the clear coat completely dry, we packed up the camp kitchen and headed out to the woods for its first big test. Man, this camp kitchen turned out awesome. After packing it into your campsite, just set the box on its base, swing both doors open to support the fold out countertops, and you, my friend, are ready to cook some delicious camp grub. We use this single drawer mostly for utensils, like our husk knife, but there's tons of storage available and even plenty of room for your trash. Do not ever do that. Why would anybody litter in the forest? That's seriously one of my pet peeves. Don't litter. Listen to your dad, kids. He's serious. Now, I think it's coffee time. Some might even say coffee 30. Why do they say coffee 30? Cause like, you know, it's like 11.30, but instead it's coffee 30. Uh-uh. Yeah. So like, you know, like it's, oh, like it's 10.30, like the time's 10.30, but then it's time for coffee, it's time for coffee, so it's coffee 30. You get it? Uh. You guys have never used a camp stove. I'm not gonna talk about it because we're not sponsored by them. Let's go look at the knife. Right now, for all of our viewers, Husk is offering 50% off on all their Japanese knives. And you can test the Husk knives for 30 days with a money back guarantee. This deal won't last long though, so make sure to check them out by clicking the link in the description below. This is what camping's all about. I love a good pot of French press coffee. If you had a separate camp stove, a freestanding one, this is the same height as most freestanding camp stoves. So you could set it up here and you'd have your whole little kitchen area. Yeah, it's a huge workspace. It's a five foot workspace, which is pretty cool. It's nuts. And then it folds up into like 17 inches by about 30. 30 so yeah, pretty sweet. Pretty compact. Tell them about uh, upcoming, uh, what do we got coming up? I don't know. I don't know either, oh my gosh. We don't have a plan. 